This is TK Coleman, and you're tuning in to an episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about the two diabolical weapons. Let's start off with tweet number one. One of the devil's most powerful weapons is his ability to convince us that prayer and meditation is a waste of time. If you think about the way the word prayer is represented in popular culture, you find that it's often depicted in a way that makes it sound like the sort of thing that you only do when you're absolutely desperate because none of the more pragmatic strategies have worked. For instance, in football, we have a, a play called the Hail Mary, where you throw the ball up and you hope someone catches it. You're living on a prayer, so to speak. And nobody in their right mind employs the Hail Mary play during the regular course of the game. You only do that when you're in a position where losing seems likely. You've tried everything else. And at this point, you've kind of accepted defeat. But hey, what the heck? I should at least try a prayer because it can't hurt at this point to try it. But the perception is that prayer can hurt if I try that before doing all the practical stuff. But prayer is this thing that we do when the practical stuff doesn't work. Even the notion of offering people our thoughts and prayers as some form of consolation has become the punchline, the punchline of many jokes now. And we've produced a culture where people are literally afraid to say to someone who is suffering or who's going through, through hardship, my thoughts and prayers are with you because they know they will be mocked for saying something like that. Today, I like to present an alternative view. I think about the words of C.S. Lewis who said, prayer does not change things, but prayer changes me. Now, I believe that C.S. Lewis did believe that prayer changes things, and I believe that prayer changes things, although I don't believe that it's some form of magic that gives us the ability to manipulate the universe at will. But the point here is that we do not pray because there is a God who is so weak and so frail and so limited that he can't do anything unless we pray about it. We pray because there is something about the power of turning our hearts and minds inward and upward that reorients our relationship to the world and makes us wiser, makes us more focused, makes us more grounded in the things that truly matter. For many of us, we wake up in the morning and we immediately orient our lives around things, the pursuit of things, the acquisition of things, the management of things, the resolving of things. We go through our to-do list and we immediately jump into the frenzy state. I've got to get things done. I've got to get things done. I've got to get things done. No time to waste. But prayer is the art of stepping back and saying, before I react and respond to the external demands that the world makes on me, I will choose to think about what matters beyond things? Because all the things in life that truly matter are not things. Well, TK, that sounds like some sort of uh, anti-capitalist, fluffy, blah, 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 blah. Well, clearly, if that's what you're thinking, you've never taught entrepreneurship. Because the first thing that you have to teach people if you want to help them become successful entrepreneurs is that if you want to be successful, you've got to think beyond things. You've got to think beyond money. You've got to think beyond trying to get other people to give you stuff. You've got to think about the intangibles like human beings and the frustration they feel about the problems they have, the needs and the desires that they have. And you've got to make yourself a student of human beings. And you've got to think about the things that you're passionate about, the things that you're interested in, and how you can take those talents and those gifts and those abilities, how you can develop them into skills, and how you can use them to serve other people. Yeah, it's okay to want things. Yeah, it's okay to care about things. Yeah, it's okay to want stuff and to want money. But you don't get to successfully have those things or do those things until you figure out a way to lift up your consciousness to a level where you can see and understand the non-things that give meaning to the things. Prayer and meditation is what allows you to do that. Never are we more stupid than when we live our lives in reactive mode. Our intelligence is compromised. Our willpower is compromised. Our conscience is desensitized when we allow to-do lists to dictate our day. 
I encourage you all to take the time every single day to step back and pray, to step back and lift your heart and mind upward in prayer or to lift your heart and mind, to direct your heart and mind inward through meditation and say, before I go after the stuff out there, I'm going to make sure I'm centered and properly oriented in relation to the stuff in here. Because the quality of everything that you do out there is gonna be the result of the interior life that you cultivate within. And whatever you wanna call that. I don't like the word prayer and meditation. All right, fine, call it what you will, but do that because you won't be relevant to the world if you aren't in control of your own heart and mind. Let's go to tweet number two. If the devil can't control what you believe, he'll try to control what you focus on. Distraction can be just as effective as deception. You know, it's very easy to take pride in the rightness of our beliefs, especially when you look around the world and you see how easy it is for people to be deceived into believing errors and lies, especially when you look around the world and you see how easy it is for people to just gobble up inf misinformation uncritically. It's really easy to feel good about yourself for having the right political beliefs, the right economic beliefs, the right theological beliefs, and to almost kind of feel like holiness or righteousness or success is the product of being someone who thinks correctly about all the important things. But here's the deal. All of those right understandings, all of those informed beliefs, all of those nuanced concepts and sophisticated distinctions that you endorse mean absolutely nothing if you're too busy obsessing over the wrong things to actually implement them, to actually act on them. The power of ideas comes from their ability to transform our behavior and to change the way that we engage the world, to change the way that we engage other people. And if we allow ourselves to become seduced by meaningless controversies, meaningless trends, oh, we may have the right to beliefs, but if we're constantly distracted, those beliefs are rendered irrelevant. We have no power. Now, when you go on social media, you'll see an endless array of arguments that you can get into, an endless array of controversies that you can find yourself debating about, an endless variety of trends to focus on. Here's what this celebrity is eating uh, today. Here's what this person said today. And oh boy, it's really stupid. We should all get together and laugh about it. And it's not my place to tell you what sorts of things to value. It's not my place to tell you that you shouldn't laugh at this or that you shouldn't laugh at that. If you care about what celebrity is eating what for lunch today, more power to you. TK Coleman has no opinion about it, but here's what I suggest you do. I suggest you begin each day by thinking about what are your preferences? What are your priorities? Where is your life going and where do you want it to go? And before you give any attention to your trends, before you give any attention to the things that people are throwing in your face saying, this is the important controversy to be focused on today. Ask yourself, is this moving my life in the right direction? Or is this just one of those things that gives me that righteous feeling that comes from thinking about how stupid other people are for not being right about the things I'm right about? It doesn't matter how right you are if you don't get to enjoy the benefits of what you're right about because you're too busy gloating over the stupidity of other people who don't know what you know. Hey, those are the two diabolical weapons that you gotta be careful about if you want to live your best life. And you get to define what that is. I'm just here to give some perspective on how you can position yourself effectively to create the results that matter most to you. That's what TK's Two Cents is all about. And that's the end of the episode. I thank you for tuning in. Don't hesitate to leave a comment, letting me know what you think about the episode. Letting me know if there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about in the future, please hit that like and that subscribe button. And if you're listening on the podcast, please be sure to subscribe and be sure to share with a family member, a friend, or heck, even an enemy, anybody that would benefit from hearing these riffs and rants. All right, y'all, create a great week. By the way, next week is Thanksgiving week, so we will not be running a live stream. Enjoy that time with your family. Enjoy that time with your friends. Maybe even take some time to pray or meditate about how you can avoid distractions so that you can act on the beliefs that you have. All right, peace.